financial services are a huge part of the economy for the UK and the US and even more important for the cities of London and New York. It's not just the Brexit phenomenon that is a source of uncertainty, but the broader domestic political situation in the UK. What is the likely outcome? Again, your guess is as good as mine. But the one certainty that we have right now in the world is that there will be considerable uncertainty. For any budding entrepreneur in the room, anyone thinking about uh, uh, launching their own asset management, that your recommendation would be to go niche, niche. small and focused Fatigue. on private. You can either be try and do everything like we do, or you can try and do one thing and be good at it. It's better if you can to be really good at, at, at one thing. How many people in the audience are optimistic uh, about the long-term future of the UK after Brexit? That's about half, wouldn't you agree? And, and, and how many are pessimistic? A few abstentions there, I'd say, I'd say the optimists <laughs> have it. London has a tremendous advantage in terms of the already established pipes for trading and so many different products. I think that your point about it being a welcoming place to come to is really important because a lot of the press and a lot of the rhetoric that's been going on has, has sort of made it feel like an unwelcome. I think that's, you know, something that we have to, 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 to really deal with. The EU should view London as an asset and not as something to discard or to make an offshore centre. Uh, a typical client has less than 10 seconds on an app to figure out whether they're going to use it or not and then they're going to move to the next app on the, on the, you know, the app store list. So in this age of instant gratification, how do you look at customer experience from that standpoint? You know, if you think about Amazon, think about that experience of a single click. Right, that's what we want to get to. Banks have not traditionally been anywhere close to that. We can actually open an account in North America now in 48 hours. It used to take three weeks. The question is, can you get to one click? Right, that's, that's going to be, be, the, be the key. Customer expectations are rising and are influenced by the experiences beyond banking. How do you keep up with those demands? I don't subscribe to, nor does our data show that there is a major generational difference between digital engagement patterns as it relates to the convenience aspects of financial services. We need to get our prospects to trust us, but our current customers usually generally have a high level of trust with us. And one thing we'll hear them say when we talk to them is, you know everything about me. Just use it for good, you know? Do, and that doesn't mean like do good in the world, it means like do useful things. One third of foreign uh, branches uh, that are regulated by the FCA uh, in the UK are American. On the most thorny issues, the UK regulators and policymakers were more in line with the way we at the US and the NAIC thought about issues uh, than just about anybody else. But one thing that hasn't changed is that banks are still fundamentally people, and the people haven't changed. We've reached a point where technology, in theory, allows us you know, to one of us could, you know, you could be in mm -hmm. Idaho and I could be in Zambia and we could be having this conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's perhaps a good example of the central reason why I think we have financial centers is because humans are built to have contact.